Thanks, Ollie, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I've really been looking forward to doing this presentation, really, because in a funny way, this uh, crazy perks of Silicon Valley, it's all, almost my story, because I've been working in the internet and uh, tech-enabled businesses for almost ever. So I started, my first job uh, in this field was I worked for AOL. I started with AOL in 1996. And it was a really different world back then. Uh, we actually had... Uh, Internet penetration in the UK was uh, 14%. So only 14% of people had internet penetration. And I don't know what you, if you know what it is now, but it's actually 87% now. So we've become a completely te tech-enabled world. And I was trying to think of what really sums up the, that kind of period of the 90s. Uh, and, it was, and it was quite difficult to find something. But I think I found something. So I'm going to test this out on the audience now and see whether you, whether you pick up what this is. Wait a minute. <laughs> so what do you think? Come on, what was that? It's dial-up. It was 56K modem dial-up, right? So that's how we all used to connect. And you can, it's funny. I could, didn't believe till today how evocative sounds were. But that sort of sums up. I can remember that. And when we used to design pages at AOL, we used to have to design them really, really light. So we put virtually no pictures on them and virtually no graphics because we thought, well, you know, if we put a big picture, then it's going to take five minutes to load. And our target load time was actually a minute. So we allowed a minute for each page to load through a 56K modem. It's unbelievable to think about that. But as part of that, because I was involved that early, I've seen a lot of the perks change because I've worked in tech companies. And I can remember when we first took down all of the partitions in the office. And we, you know, like we joined an organization, and there was lots of partitions, and the managers all sat in offices, and we went to open plan. And everyone was deeply shocked. They said, well, but how can the managers actually sit out in the floor with everyone else? Shouldn't they? And, then, and then I remember the managers used to try and sit in the corner because they thought that was a bit more comfortable than to be actually out there. And I can remember when we put our first um, table tennis table in. So we put table tennis in, and they, everyone said, well, doesn't that mean that everyone will stop, stop working? You know, everyone will go and play table tennis all day. Of course, that, of course they didn't. And then we, I remember when we introduced um, shoulder massage and neck massage, because we had all these developers working, and they said, well, they're at their keyboards all day. You know, wouldn't it be great if they had a little bit of massage to relieve that? And the developers hated it. You know, they absolutely hated it. Most developers, they didn't want to be touched. You know, they don't want anyone to touch me. And in fact, one of my kind of conclusions of having worked with developers for, for a long time, nearly 20 years now, is actually that there's only two perks that really motivate developers. And so that applies to your IT teams as well. Only two perks that really work, pizza and beer. That's it, it's pizza and beer every time. If you want to get the IT team to do anything, just give them pizza and beer. But I'm going to talk a little bit today about how Silicon Valley have taken those early kind of perks, you know, the table tennis and the, the neck mask, and how they've moved that forward, and kind of explain why, why they're doing it, but also um, then look at maybe some things that you can do in your, your organizations as well. But before I do that, I want to start with actually what, are what we might call old benefits. And old benefits really... The old world of employee benefits is all about insurance, and it's all about risk. And these are the sort of things that I mean. We look at this, employee assistance, EAP program. I'm sure a lot of you have got them. But really, that's when you get into trouble, isn't it? That's the number for you to call if your wife's going to leave you or you have problems with your children. That's the opportunity to do that. Or death in service cover. You know, it's important, but it's, it's an insurance and it's a risk-based product. And it's not really... The question about these benefits is, yes, they're important. Yes, they provide a real benefit to employees. But do they motivate people and do they engage people? Do, they, do people actually think, this, this is an engagement tool, this is something which I can use? Do employees ever think about these? I think they take them for granted. I think they take them for granted and they lose, they lose their value. They lose their value. So what are the sort of things <coughs> excuse me, that Silicon Valley are actually doing in the new world? Well, who can tell me what this is? Sleep pod. Thank you. It's a sleep pod. This one uh, 
is actually at Google, but they have them at HuffPost and a number of different organizations there because they've looked into the um, effectiveness of taking short power naps, and they've put these in there. It's interesting, isn't it? So people can go and have a power nap in the middle of the day. I quite like these, Glenn. I think we should get some. I could power nap after lunch. What about this? This is, a, this is at Google. They've got a ball pit at Google. Uh, quite why people want to go in the ball pit, I'm not really sure, but it's a bit like the sort of kids area at Ikea, but for grown-ups. And actually, I just found out, they, you know they're building the new Google offices in, uh, up behind King's Cross at the moment. They're building huge offices up there. They have a plan to make the whole of the flat surface at the top is actually going to be a crazy golf course. I've actually seen the pictures. They're going to have a crazy golf course on the roof at the new Google building. What about this? This is actually a barber shop, and it's actually at Facebook. So on the Facebook ca campus out in Silicon Valley, they've got a barber shop so that people can go in middle of the day and get their hair cut. And interestingly, it sort of reminds me of the more old school paternalistic companies, because I was up in North Wales recently, and driving down the side of Lake Bala, and there's this beautiful hotel there with a small golf course in front and beautiful facilities. And it tur I, I, I turned to a person I said, Oh, that looks really nice. Perhaps we could go there. And on the thing, it's actually not a hotel. It's owned by John Lewis. And it's for John Lewis employees can go there, or partners of people in John Lewis are called, can go there and uh, book that as a, as a holiday uh, place, exclusively for their use. So it's interesting that Facebook are starting to do this sort of activity, which is rather similar to, to that sort of activity done by perhaps more traditional companies. What about this one? This is Evernote. Some of you may know the product, but Evernote, this is the CEO of uh, Phil Libnin, who's CEO of Evernote. And uh, they have a fantastic benefit, actually. I think this is probably my favorite one. They say to every employee of Evernote, we will clean your house top to bottom free twice a month. And that, it's a good benefit. And if they did the ironing as well, it would be almost perfect. <laughs> and it's great, isn't it? It's a fantastic benefit. So what I'm going to do is actually just use this infographic to maybe walk through some of the benefits so that you can have uh, a broader view. So this is the amenities in the office. Well, Google's more or less got everything. Fitness classes, running trails, haircuts, car washes, on-site gym, uh, massages, laundry, dry cleaning, rock climbing wall, and so on. Uh, Facebook, laundry, um, photo processing. This is a bit strange, leather repair. Can't quite work out why you want anything repaired that's leather. Can't, can't quite see that. And uh, over at LinkedIn, being bag lounge, yoga, Pilates in the afternoon, chair massages, and so on. And then this is uh, Twitter. They've got rock climbing. Rock climbing wall is quite popular at the moment. That's obviously one of the fashionable things. Again, yoga and Pilates, gym, yoga room, massage, and a quiet room over there, and a wellness allowance. And again, for Eventbrite, uh, similarly, they've got a Zen room, which is very useful. And then food perks. All of these organizations you know, make a great big deal about food. You know, they have, I, I've actually been to the Google European HQ in Dublin, and I've been around it. And it's amazing. They've got these sort of gourmet restaurants, which are completely free. But what's even more surprising is when you walk around the building, they don't have sort of traditional uh, desks anywhere. You go into an area where people are sat, and everybody is walking around with a laptop. So you sit down, and then about every 20 meters, they've got like a feeding station, a drinks and feeding station where they've got sweets and soft drinks, about every 20 meters. It's completely overdone. And I wonder why they, how, they, they, how they can get any uh, work done, but also why they don't all really fat. Because it's <laughs> literally, you, you sit in an area, you go to the next area, and there's a free feeding station. You go a bit further, there's another one. They dotted it all around their, their campus. So they're very big on, on that. Games and activities. <coughs> Foosball is very popular. I'm not sure why, but it is. Ping pong, uh, you know, takes me back to my AOL days when we introduced that. Again, foosball over with tagged and uh, company bicycles and et cetera, et cetera. So the question for this really is, is actually, why, why do they do this? Why do they do this? Why do they have this huge range of perks and benefits? What's, what's, what's the purpose behind it? And... Really, I think there's three reasons why people do this. The three reasons are really, the first, is, the first is money, actually. And I think this is the predominant reason. It's about money. And 
what they're in out there is, a, is there's a race for talent. There's a talent war in Silicon Valley. It's really hard to get good developers to come and work for you without them being in competition for that hire. And I know there's been, there was actually uh, recently, about six months ago, it was revealed that actually um, Facebook and Apple had a no-poach agreement. And the reason they had a no-poach agreement was because they, you know, it's so expensive and they didn't want to just escalate salaries. So they do this, they introduce all these benefits, because actually, if you wanted to get all the best people, you could simply do this. You could simply double the salary. You could just say, I'll pay everybody twice as much, I'm going to get the best people. You might have problems to engage them, and you might have problems to retain them, but you certainly recruit them. But they can't afford to do that, and they don't want to do that. So what they do is they put in a raft of benefits that actually are relatively low cost. You know, even though I try to work out how much the uh, cleaning one, one, uh, benefit would be. But it might not actually be that expensive. It's certainly cheaper than paying them another $10,000 in salary. So they use it that. They use that actually to maintain their salary levels at a certain point. The second is time. And, time, and by time, what I mean is we want to keep you longer at work. And that's part of the reason they have these benefits. Because if I've got my gym there, if I've got to get my hair cut there, I can do my dry cleaning there, then actually I may stay longer in the office. It's particularly important, some of you all know, in professional services companies, you know, they have sleep pods, not because they, they're being particularly friendly, but because if you, they need you to pull an all-nighter, like in the law firms or some of the consultancy firms, then they want you to be able to sleep there as well. And that's certainly important for some of these companies. They'll provide an environment where you can work, and you can work through a very extended day if you need to, because they've got food through the, through the day, they've got lots of relaxation areas, and so on. And the third one, which is really important, is culture. Is culture. Benefits are really important for your culture. And the reason they're important for culture is because you, they're desperately trying to differentiate themselves from other people. It says something about my organization if I'm able to provide a wide range of perks and benefits to those people. And it says something about belonging to that organization. It says something about how we care for people. But it also gives me the opportunity to try and differentiate from some of my competitors. So it's those three reasons that they do that. And I think that the question for us is, you might say, well, that's great. That's fantastic. It's completely meaningless for me. I don't live in Silicon Valley. I'm not Google. I don't make huge profits every day and I'm not looking to hire developers. So all of that is probably, how is that in any way relevant for me? Because I guess that's one extreme. We've got traditional benefits that I talked about, the risk and insurance benefits, but then you've got the extreme of Silicon Valley. So what I want to do is say, well, actually, there is something more you can do that all of you can do that is different from the big benefits of, of Silicon Valley and different from your traditional risk-based insurance benefits. So what I'm going to take you through now is 10 different things that you can do that you can really easily implement, and five of them are completely free. So they won't cost you anything. There are five initiatives you can put in completely free, and another five if you've got a little bit of budget that you can find a relatively low cost. So let me take you through our top 10. The top 10 benefits that you can do. Okay, so the first benefit is... Childcare, childcare vouchers. This doesn't cost you as an employer anything. We provide it, there's lots of other providers in the market. Childcare vouchers cost you nothing. In fact, you save on NI. And each parent can save up to a maximum of £933 per year. And it can be used not just for, it can be used for any kind of uh, childcare up to the age of 15. But you need to get a hurry because the scheme's closed because they believe that legislation is going to change. Whether it will or not, uh, the, government, the current government, anyway, have said that they are going to change the rules in, in the autumn. But there's an opportunity for you to do that. And actually, um, I use this. I've got a, a number of three children, but I've got an eight-year-old daughter. And I didn't realize, but I actually found out, have any of you heard of PGL? Any of you with children probably know it. It's a kids-based activity um, where they can go away to activity centers during the school holidays. And my eight-year-old daughter, and I use this uh, benefit for that. And my eight-year-old daughter came back and said, uh, I said to her, how, how was PGL? She said, Daddy, it's not PGL, it's parents get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. They teach them that. That's the first thing they teach them when they get there. But yeah, so that's number one. Child, it won't cost you anything. It does not cost you anything. In fact, you'll make money from the NI saving. 
What is the second one? Buy an iPad and pay for it over 12 months interest-free. And how can you do that? How can you do that? And this one also doesn't cost you anything. Well, there's no tax to pay or any reporting to do on an interest-free loan to an employee of up to £10,000. That rate has just been doubled, and you can use this vehicle, you can use this in your organisation, and we used it ourselves to fund an iPad scheme for our employees. It's really, really straightforward to do and really easy to do and really effective. doesn't matter how big your organization is, you can do this. And as I say, the important thing, because it comes out of your net pay rather than gross, there's no ta tax implications and there's nothing that you need to do in any form of reporting. You can just get on and do it. We used it, as I said, in, uh, in RG, and these are the products that we offered. And this is how we worked it out. So we did it for all of our different countries. We're, at that time, we were uh, just in these three countries. We're now in, in, in Bulgaria, of course. But this is how it worked. We did our um, normal RG discount, which would be on, through our normal RG uh, shopping discount. We gave an additional bonus discount for our staff uh, because we chose to. We gave a total saving there. And where it ended up is basically, if you pay for it over two years, it costs you £13. Keep cost, and... We made the mechanic really easy. So this was the comms. We did it in the summer last year. Um, everyone's three weeks to choose. Uh, and basically explained it that, that simply. Really, really straightforward. Really worked well. And we had over 60%, 60% of our employees took up this offer. So it worked really well. And everyone felt really positive about it. And actually, we just ran the whole thing on a spreadsheet. You know, it's really simple to run. Ran it on a spreadsheet. Worked really easily. Again, free to put in place and, and, and a great engagement tool. Thank you. Thank you. Saying thank you. Saying thank you is a really big deal and it's free. It's free. We make such a big thing of this in RG and we hold uh, quarterly business meetings where we stream and we all stand up on stage in different countries. Last week we did it. I was actually presenting from our offices in Plovdiv in Bulgaria. So we live stream from there and also from London. And we do thank you awards. And actually, when we get look at our feedback from, the, from those events, the thank you awards are probably some of the most positive feedback that we get as an organization is around the thank you awards. And the way we run them is that we ask people to nominate their colleague for a thank you award. So we ask co colleagues to do that. So people put forward the, why they want that, and we film them. We film them their nomination, and then all the nominations are collected together, and then a panel made up of a number of people from different parts of the, of the company sit down and review all the nominations. So somebody says, I'd like to nominate so-and-so because they showed this particular value, uh, whether it's work hard or one of the reward gateway values. A panel of people from across the business select the winners, and then previously we'd almost invited the winners up on stage. But for this last uh, business update, we changed the format. And I've got a couple of the films. So what we chose to do is we actually chose to film the people giving the award, either in the office or remotely, to their colleague that, that they'd nominated. So we actually, um, we actually changed the format, and I think it was even more powerful. I've got a bit of film for you now um, for you to watch. Hey guys, do you know why you're here today? No, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, basically just press the space bar and you will see. It's gonna explode? No. <laughs> Hi, Vessi. I wanted to let you know I've nominated you for a thank you award for our work on value and you've won. Congratulations. Uh, I've nominated you because you work super hard on every project we're involved in together and you stay positive in the face of challenges. Uh, you're knowledgeable and you're prepared in front of clients and if you don't have the facts right away you're always determined to go away and find the best answer. Uh, sometimes that means learning lots of new facts, sometimes you need to push really hard to focus on things until we get to the bottom of them. And in both cases, uh, knowing I can count on someone as organised, patient and precise as you are makes a huge difference. Um, in short, you're an absolute delight to work with and generally one of the loveliest people I've met at Haji. And I just can't thank you enough. Congratulations again. Yay! Wow! <laughs>
Um, I've nominated Seb for the Be Human value. Uh, Seb is absolutely brilliant at helping us communicate with clients um, who have like particular product queries or just to help translate that product jargon into really good client friendly jargon. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Seb. So I'm going to go and surprise him with this. Okay. <laughs> Not you. Hi Seb. <laughs> Uh, I nominated you for a thank you award oh. for being human, wow. and you won. So wow. um, it's just for all your help downstairs with our clients. Come oh, on, on, I get it. <laughs> thank you. As you can see, we had about six of those done, and you know they're very powerful. And we actually give people a small um, cash prize as well if they. But you know you don't actually need to have a cash prize because people, you know. People just want to be seen and they're recognised by their peers and they're really, really powerful and something I'd strongly advise you to think about doing. So the next one, Cycle to Work. Again, this is free. We, we do this, but lots of other suppliers do, so we, we can do a Cycle to Work scheme for you. Basically, you get a 40% discount on a new bike and up to a maximum of £1,000. That also includes that you can, within the uh, amount that you spend, you can also have safety equipment so you can get your helmet and your lights and everything else. And it's really easy to do, easy to set up, very little administration in terms of what you need to do. And clearly it's got, you know, the employers save NI, but there's an impact on well-being. You know, they are popular. We run, them into, we run our own cycle to work and we run, for a number of our clients, we run cycle to work schemes. Again, it's a free benefit. It's something that you, there's no reason for you not to put that in place. This one, uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. The story is that about four years ago in Reward Gateway, we got to the end of the year and realised that we didn't have enough money to pay any bonuses. We ran them when we ran, got to the end of the year. So we came up with the idea of actually, rather than giving no bonuses at all, what we did is literally we went to our quarterly business update and instead of giving people a... What we did is we actually turned up, we put two crisp £50 notes in an envelope for every single person in the company and we gave them out at that event. And it was really powerful. And the reason it was powerful is because people rarely get £50 notes and actually have something in their hand like that. I'm not sure how well that actual bonus was used, but it was certainly, it was certainly a great benefit. And certainly people really enjoyed it at, at the time. Another benefit that we have is, or another idea that we have, is this is actually what it would cost you if you were able to do it. So it gives you an idea of where, where those costs would be, as you can see. Um, the, another benefit we have is, no, we don't have free babies. That isn't completely true. But as our demographic, we've got a very young demographic at Reward Gateway. <coughs> as they're growing, as they're slightly getting older, we're getting a few, a few people starting to get engaged and so on. Uh, and a few people are getting married. A few people are just starting to have babies. So we've introduced a, uh, a baby bonus, which is we give you a £500 bonus when you have or adopt a child. Again, it's a small gesture, a small gesture, but, but powerful, powerful in terms of engagement and powerful about the message that we're putting out to you as a new parent to be. We also have a marriage bonus. When you uh, get married or have a civil partnership, £1,000 bonus. Again, it's something you can do. It's not a massive cost to the organisation uh, when you look at it over, over the years and how many people are actually getting married each year. But again, it helps us celebrate something in people's lives and it helps us be involved in that and it helps build engagements with our teams. Another one is birthday cakes. Well, birthday cakes work when you're up to about 50 people and we still actually do birthday cakes when we're in, within our teams. You know, lots of the smaller teams do it. But when uh, Reward Gate was smaller, we were able to do it. Uh, up to 50 employees, but then we sort of had birthdays coming through every week, so we couldn't do it, and now it's more done in teams. So we actually, we've actually switched to doing a birthday tweet call or email to recognise that and call that out. But I think this is a... Uh, that's great, but I think this is uh, even better. We actually give everybody, and it's something you can think about, we actually give everybody the day off on their birthday. They get the day off on their birthday. That, it's not part of their holiday allowance. It's just on your birthday, you have a day off. I think that's it's great, and I do believe that actually if you give someone a day off on their birthday, they catch up all their work when they come back. I don't believe you have lost productivity as a result of it. People literally are able to, to catch up uh, the day they come back from, from their birthday off. This one's an interesting one, the Kindle. One of the things we do is we're always looking to ensure, and this is again a relatively cheap, um, a relatively cheap 
uh, perk or benefit for you to introduce to your, to your organizations. We uh, say to anybody within RG, if there's a book that you want to buy that is in any way relevant, in any way relevant to your work and what you're doing at work, then we will fund it. If you buy it on Kindle, we will fund that. And we'll we simply do it through the expenses policy. And what that enables people to do is, is to get fine books that it could be about personal development, it could be about professional development in terms of their particular area. I just bought a book on, uh, on passwords through this scheme, which doesn't sound very interesting, but it's kind of interesting. I've just shared it with our, with our principal uh, uh, technical architect about how you build strong passwords and how you get that through an organization. But we use this. We have used... It, sometimes things are on the edge, you know? I'm not sure Fifty Shades of Grey ki kind of fits into this, but the reality of it is most people are incredibly sensible about things like this, and they do choose books. And it's not a misused, misused benefit. And the cost to us is relatively small. But again, it's a relatively cheap way to engage in people's personal development and their professional development. It gives you a way to, to engage with your employees through that method. You can run a lottery at work without a gambling license. I don't know how many of you know that, but you can run. So we had this idea, why don't we start up a staff lottery? And the staff lottery says we got someone to go out and find a tombola drum. We got a load of ping pong balls, and we wrote everybody's uh, employee number on the ping pong balls. And we run the lottery 12 times a year. And in fact, at the, at the uh, GBUs or our business updates, we actually do it on stage. We do it live. We usually get our guest speaker to draw the lottery balls. So we spin the, spin the tombola around, pick the balls out, read out the number, and everyone cheers, and, and the winners get a cash prize. It sounds crazy, but you don't need to, you're not breaking the law, nothing, you're not underhand in any way. And again, people love it. And the uh, costs of it are relatively low. This is, uh, this is us, us with our prize running for 12 months a year. And actually, since we've now got uh, over 100 staff working for us in Bulgaria, we've, started, we've pro rated the prizes, so actually the total prize cost has reduced a bit because the Bulgarian standard of living is, uh, is cheaper than ours, and as a result, the prizes are slightly lower. But again, if you think about it, that's not a great sum of money for you to be running a, a monthly staff lottery with some significant prizes that people love to receive uh, and enjoy. So, in summary... These are the ones you can add at no cost. I've talked about them. These are the ones you can add at absolutely no cost. So you've got childcare, cycle to work, the iPad, extra day off on your birthday. This interest-free season ticket loan is just the, another use of this because you can do loans out to your staff up to £10,000, remember? So this is just this. You can use this for anything you want. You can do your season ticket loan or your iPad and, in fact, probably able to do both. And if you want to spend just a little bit more money... You can do a baby bonus, you could do a married bonus, you can do the monthly staff lottery. This one fits in both, actually, because you can do this one without any cash awards. I think it, personally, I think it would be just as powerful. The fact you get an award, you could get a certificate and people will be just as pleased. It's the fact they've been recognised by their peers. And, of course, you can, uh, as I said, the interest-free season ticket loan. So that's it from me. That's the roundup. So I showed you a bit about those crazy benefits in uh, Perks in Silicon Valley, a bit about how you might be able to implement things when you get back to your office uh, tomorrow. If you do, uh, for us as a company, this is what we act, where we actually show it all. This is our smart hub at Reward Gateway. It's called Boom. And you can see we've got some of our, so we've got uh, cycle to work and childcare there and various other of our, of our benefits are listed there. So that's one of the ways, and you'll hear more about smart hub later on today. But if you want to, uh, Tweet me or speak to me, you can get hold of me, or you can, I'm around all day, and I'm happy to talk through any of these other benefits and, uh, and how they work. So that's all from me, and I'll hand back to uh, Ollie. Thank you.